Well, welcome to another pinball repair from the Goat Shed. Today is Friday, the 25th of February, 2022. It's about 24 degrees Celsius outside, which is roughly around about 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Somewhat overcast day. Well, here we are working on this very rare game, the best Texas Ranger, which is an Adderball version for the Italian market of Gottlieb's Texas Ranger. Now, this machine was made by a company called Skill Game, and we've been working here on the head box and we've found another number of problems. As usual, we've done our usual work with this rebuilding the stepper units, there's two stepper units in this, this one we're looking at is the uh, the ball count unit, the other stepper which is almost identical is the light box unit which is to do with um, adding on the 100,000 points and extra balls etc. Now what we actually found or what we're going to have to do to this which we're going to illustrate in our video today is we've found some very very badly worn rivets on the ball count unit so that one on the left there that's worn right down almost below the Bakelite a few others there need replacing we're actually going to replace probably all but one of those because we're running low on the rivets at the moment we've got to get some more but that's necessary so we're going to run through that process of how to do that which you do need to do. The top ones are all good, they're A-OK, -okay. there's no problems with those whatsoever. So we don't need to do anything with those, we've just cleaned them up with a Dremel tool. So Spanky's there having a look at what we're up to. And if we move round to the back of the machine, we'll show you, show you what we've been doing round there as well. So we've removed all the score reels for cleaning in the ultrasonic cleaner, stripped them right down to the frame. Here's the last one we've got to do. Polished up the rack. New sleeve in the coil for the coil. Um, cleaned them all up. And we've just got to reassemble this and put the switches and everything back in. Now every one of these had a, a broken long end of stroke switch so we've had to replace four end of stroke switches. We need to put the the switches back in and adjust them. They'll go back in in a minute. There's the back plate of the other. We haven't cleaned that yet. That's the light box stepper. That's got to be done. There's all the wires off the ball count stepper, which is yet to be done. And we've still got to do all the relays. So we'll take all those relays out, check them, clean them and inspect them for correct operation. So that's where we're up to so far on this, so we'll show you how we actually repair that um, that disc. Right, here we are fitting the rivets now to the Bakelite plate. Now first thing we noticed on this Bakelite plate when we're putting the rivets in is that the plate is actually thicker than a Gottlieb. Not much, but it is a little bit thicker. Therefore the rivets don't poke through the hole on the other side all that well. In other words, the depth of the rivet. So what the first task is, is to drill the old rivet out. Now we've got a drill bit here, which is a 1 8 drill bit. And we're just going to use our Dremel on low speed. We've already made a pilot hole with a centre punch. And there we are drilling that out. And off it comes. There's the other one we're doing. We, we decided to do all the rivets on this. I mentioned earlier we may have only been going to do five, but we've, we've, we've found a few more rivets and we're going to do the whole six. So you drill a hole in the wood. Because that's necessary. Yeah, so we've got a hole drilled in the wood so the rivet goes down into that. Obviously to make it easy. Just a punch to punch it out. Out they come. A 
couple of goes. Not rocket science, just a bit of basic, basic engineering. Would be better if we weren't on a wooden bench, but we don't have a metal bench, we only have our vice. I think everyone can get the idea how, how it works though. Right, then you drill them out. Now, just going to read through those holes. Right, dust that off. Have a look at those holes now. Reflect them off with the eyes. Right, so put a pin in. Yeah. There we go. So we put one in. Just uh, Graham will just hold that up for you now. We've got a pewter pretty up yet. You have to drop that down, Graham. Here. That's just the wrong way around. <laughs> <laughs> drop that, drop that down lower. Here it is. We've already done three. Yeah. So we've we've already done some. I'll just try and get some focus on that. There you go. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to hammer them down. Go to the vise. Right, now we're just going to use the heel of the vise. We're going to pop that rivet in. Now, we're using a punch to do this simply because, as I mentioned earlier on, it just doesn't. Yeah. They're not, just not quite long enough, and now we're going to drop some solder on there to, to fix that up. So we're just applying a bit of flux to the back of that rivet. The soldering line's heated up to temperature. We've got our iron on about 420 degrees Celsius in this instance. On it goes, see that flux burn up. Drop that solder on, let it melt in a little bit at first. Just a touch more. And bingo, it's and that's done. It. That's all you've got to do. Um, We've got to run a jump from that one to that one. Yeah, we've got to solder a jumper wire on there. We've done that one. Um, it's not pretty, but... <laughs> so, that's more or less what we do to put them in. If that was a got lube, you, um, you could actually press the rivet in. And there is a special tool you can get to do that, I believe. Um, we don't have the luxury of having one of those. However, um, you've got to do what you've got to do. Those rivets that were in there before were totally unacceptable and they needed to be changed. So we're also going to change the wiper fingers. So the wiper fingers need to get changed and put new springs on, we've got them here. Now of course, all these parts we're using are available from PBR and um, we recommend if you're going to be working on pinball machines a lot like we do, you need to have these parts in stock. Now, if you haven't got them, it is possible to file all the fingers. The fingers do get flat and they make those cuts in the rivets like we have on this one here. And, uh, of course, when you've put new um, fingers in and springs on the plate, you should be able to put on some um, PBR grease or something similar, three-in-one, to help them put the guide through a bit more smoothly. It's a simple little thing. And I was just starting to say earlier on, you can file those fingers round again if you haven't got any new ones. Um, that's, of course, all possible. Once again, a little bit of engineering, and um, away you go. So I hope this video has been somewhat helpful to you in understanding about these plates. Now, of course, we had to unsolder all the wires from that plate. Naturally, we took a photo of them before we took them off and uh, we can know where to put them back but that will help you get a better understanding of, of how to do it so once again thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channel and give us the big thumbs up and this has been another Goat Shed presentation